So one of the most famous, most prevalent uh, softwares out there for accounting, I see a lot of businesses using is QuickBooks. Uh, and that's a big factor in um, people switching um, merchant services. They want to know, they want to keep their bookkeeper happy and their accountant happy and how all that's going to integrate. So we have a solution for that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank God. I mean, QuickBooks has been a powerhouse for so long for so many businesses to get their accounting done and, and manage their books. They had that deal locked down for many years. I mean, we go back to desktop, right? So QuickBooks desktop, there was a bridge that we had and it was synced up through a gateway. So you'd have to have your computer on and a USB deal connected to a terminal and you can enter it. And then at the end of the night, it would like reconcile and closed out and it would push through. Then came the online version of QuickBooks, which was awesome, right? Way more user-friendly, way more compatible for so many uh, business owners that want to be in different places and be able to log in and access their bookkeeping and stuff. So the online version was locked down for a long time uh, where only QuickBooks could be the processor behind that. And with that comes much higher rates, you know, because it's proprietary. So there's been some companies uh, that we've worked with over the last couple of years that have had an integration and that's been great. It's been a great starting point, you know, for nine, 10 bucks a month, all of a sudden now you've got an integration and you can get payments in, but it was only working for so long with online payments. So you, you know, if you sent an invoice or uh, took a payment over the phone and keyed it into this virtual terminal, it would post it wasn't covering any of the payments in store card present type stuff. Um, and it they, they were a little bulky. So recently, one of our big partners, uh, Deja Vu and iPods Pay Systems, they've got an integration. It is second to none. It is so awesome. It's streamlined, it's fast. It works in the card present environment. So, you know, you've got customers that are coming into the store running a card. Every single time that transaction finishes, it posts in real time in QuickBooks. So, you know, if you're using the online version and your accountant wants to jump in from his office and reconcile your books or look at anything, I mean, at the time he logs in and sees it, he is seeing real time the last transaction you posted that went in there. You can do your invoicing through there. And as long as you, uh, you know, tag the invoice number, it'll reconcile, push right into QuickBooks payment links, text to pay, all the other convenient ways. But I think probably for a lot of businesses, there's an added savings in having that card present feature in QuickBooks. We come across so many businesses that use it. And when I meet with them, they'll tell me, oh, we pay you know someone to go ahead and enter those QuickBooks transactions for us. Or it's another couple hours of work we have mm -hmm. to do every single day to manually enter in all those batches and totals. So, you know, time is money, right? And, and that's it right there. I mean, that real-time integration, pushing every single payment in real time, you're saving time. And by the fact that we're able to do the processing and offer you lower rates than you would get going through QuickBooks, you're saving money. What are, what are the three main benefits you see when a merchant switches to diversified payments? Savings, definitely personal service. And I think um, I'm gonna go with knowledge. You know, there's just so many customers out there that have something that works great. And they don't know what else it can do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that we stay on top of that with them and show them the other features we stay up to date. So as anything ever changes, you know, we're putting out a memo, whether it be a text message, an email, or, you know, our reps that are out in the field are going in and sharing that with the merchants. The better knowledge they have and understanding they have of the tools that are, are present for them today, you know, the more efficiently they can run their business. And I see that all the time with, uh, in businesses and you see a, a real old uh, credit card terminal um, sometimes like, I mean, it won't even have tap to pay. It may not even, you know, read a chip or whatever. It's really old. Um, and there's, those aren't safe, right? There's. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So, you know, you go back to a lot of guys that are 
swiping, you know, or a lot of businesses that are swiping hard still today. They don't have an EMV reader and uh, it's not safe. EMV came out, gosh, I forget how many years back. It was mandated that all businesses had to upgrade their terminals to an EMV reader. Well, there's a lot of businesses that did, but there's a lot of software companies that provide software and they didn't go ahead and push the upgrade. So there's, you know, retail stores that are using the software and they're still swiping carts. Um, there's restaurant POS systems that we know of personally and use every day that you're swiping a card. When I have conversations with those business owners, the first thing I ask them is how many chargebacks are you getting? And the number is unbelievable how many they're getting. The second question I ask, how many are you winning? None. <laughs> So the EMV program pretty much came out and said like, here's a new program, like get on board and get with it. You know, make sure you have a chip reader and EMV compatible terminal, get with it or, you know, deal with the consequences of, we are not gonna, you're not gonna win any chargebacks. You're going to pay extra fees for the chargebacks. You know, a lot of businesses don't realize that you get a chargeback, it probably costs 25 bucks, you know, for that chargeback. Um, and then you also lose the money, you know, that, mm -hmm. that came with that. And sometimes, you know, uh, there could be additional fees, like excessive chargeback fees, if there's a business that gets hit with a lot of them. We have found more so that uh, in certain areas, in certain business models, that when there is a non-EMV compliant terminal in there, and it's just a swipe one, customers realize, the scammers at least, not customers, but the scammers realize, hey, I can get away with doing business here and I can charge it back. And we had an interesting case that came up pretty recently and it was a large uh, fried chicken franchise. And what the customer or the scammers, I shouldn't call them customers, <laughs> but the scammers were doing was they were going in there and they were buying gift cards. So they would buy a gift card with their credit card or debit card, put a hundred bucks on this gift card and then they would go back and they would charge back that card. So now they had $100 worth of free credits on that gift card. And they're going in there eating every single day, getting their <laughs> chicken and food and <laughs> happy as can be. And the pattern just continually repeated itself. You know, we started looking at this deal and it's like, man, all your chargebacks are coming through 50 or 100 bucks. Like, you know, you come in and out of here, it's kind of hard to spend that much money. Mm -hmm. uh, even with my family going there, and what are y'all selling so much of this? And, you know, we dove in deeper and it's, oh yeah, they're buying gift cards and then they're charging back the credit card, but they got the credit on the gift card and they're using it. So, you know, people, people are, they get creative when they go to stealing. How often do you think uh, a business owner needs to be in touch with his, uh, his merchant services rep to stay mm -hmm up to date on compliance issues, uh, hardware, software, equipment, um, all that type of stuff, fees, all that. How often do you think, you know, uh, uh, their rep should be in contact with them? Well, I think if your rep does his job right and sets you up correctly on day one, going back and looking at your fees and your rates should be a non-issue because technically, you know, we offer it diversified payments. We've got a rate lock guarantee. There's not gonna be any surprises. So if I sign your business today at this rate and these fees, that's what it's gonna be for as long as we do business together. You know, so that being said, we don't need to visit on it, but I do like to say at least once a year, I like to take a look <clears throat> and see, and just, I think it's, I think it's important to have that relationship, you know, with your credit card processing rep and to do an annual review and take a peek and say, hey, everything was good, that's great. But the other side of it, I think that uh, having a personal relationship with your credit card processor, uh, your agent, I think it's absolutely essential. If you have the ability to have a rep, <coughs> excuse me, where you could have a personal relationship with them, it's a game changer. We've got so many of our reps, uh, their customers, their merchants, they're just shooting them a text message, you know. Nobody wants to sit on hold for an hour and wait to get a, you know, 800 number, sit on hold for an hour. The person who answers the phone, you've got to tell your whole problem to, and then, you know, and then you hear, 
okay, sir, hold on, I'll transfer you to this person. Another too. department. Another <laughs> department, you know, and then you get a voicemail and you're like, man, you know, I kind of need it now, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's, I, I, I think having a relationship with your merchant processing rep is absolutely essential, you know? We get so many little text messages or calls, you know, throughout the day. Some minor, you know, something minor. Hey, power went out last night and the pin pad and the terminal aren't sinking. How do I handle it? Perfect. We can sh simply text a response back. They can fix it in 10 seconds. You know, longer the days, gone are the days of, you know, hey, let me come out there and I'll fix it. You know, a lot of the stuff we could deal with virtually or we can help out with the simple text message. So keep that business up and running. I think it's great to have a relationship with, uh, with your merchant services rep. What are a few things that uh, a business owner can do to fight fraud and scammers? Uh, just like the other day we had a guy, uh, he got a charge back. Um, there's a card not present over the phone. They sent him the information, he ran it and there was something fishy on their end. They charged it back and, uh, and kept everything that they got. Um, how do we, how can we protect a business owner from, from losing a big chunk of money like that? Yeah, it's <clears throat> KYC, know your customer. You know, that's probably the number one most important thing. You know, if you don't know someone and they're calling in to do a high ticket purchase or something, you've got to take extra steps. You know, you've got to be extra cautious when that stuff happens because it does happen exactly like you said. You know, having an invoice that's signed, having a copy of a driver's license, some things that are simple. And a lot of business owners may think, oh man, it's an inconvenience. But you know, if you're gonna call me for the first time over the phone and place a $10,000 order and we've never done business before and I don't know you, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and protect myself and I'm gonna ask you, hey, can you go ahead and text me a picture of your driver's license and you know, I need the the zip code on that credit card, you know, the address and the zip code on that credit card to have, have to match, you know, mm -hmm. you go ahead and do that and you're in probably going to reduce the chances of fraud a lot better. Uh, the other thing is shipping. You know, the big thing we see with fraud is that somebody's placing an order online and they're saying, <coughs> ship that product somewhere else. When you take a credit card over the phone, and you don't have a signature, an invoice signed, it's not going to the same address that matches the billing address. There's no signer, you know, at the location to sign on it. I mean, you are just batting zero right there. I mean, you don't have a leg to stand on. It's, you know, the credit card company is gonna say, well, the customer said it wasn't them, you know. Well, there's no proof it was, mm -hmm. you know, and probably it wasn't, you know, yeah. at, at that point in time. So. You know, taking the extra steps, doing the due diligence. One, know your customer. If it's somebody that you've done business with before, um, obviously that's the best customer you have. But if it's somebody that's calling in, uh, it's a card not present environment, you've got to do, take the extra steps and get to know that person in that short amount of time you're taking that transaction. Picture, photo ID, uh, signature, that stuff's really awesome. I think one of the newest and greatest technologies that exists